Hey, Jen. You're muted. There you are. How are you doing? Good morning. Good. Is it just you and me? Let me see. Yep, it's just you and me. Woohoo! <laughs> it's Jamila, yeah? Jamila, yes. yes. Jamila, okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I keep on. I um, hmm? my, my voice keeps on um, getting more hoarse. I don't know, I know. Do I get it or I just haven't survived the Tony thing. Yeah, yeah well, we're getting it later, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria's all excited and happy to hey, play. She's like, yay, my TW friend. She just wants to play. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did she come with you to date with Destiny? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She comes with me everywhere, but she was in customer service. Hey. I was going to say, because when you came out, I didn't see the dog you were being walked by uh one of the senior leaders yes yeah yeah exactly okay yeah, but um but she stays in the customer service area um oh. yeah because it gets too crazy the music is way too loud and the energy and people are jumping and you know <laughs> like just they're, they're high energy and it's too much for her she'll get <laughs> so yeah so no she stays out there I mean, in other conferences, other than Tony events, you know, she's completely fine to sit with me and hang out with me. But the way, you know, it's a party over at the Tony Robbins event. It's just not <laughs> it is. conducive for her, right? So yeah. um, <clears throat> it's safer for her because then um, they look after her and people come love her and pet her and play with her and take her for walks and... So, so that's actually something new because I thought you couldn't touch a blind person's dog. I know that sounds like crazy. Yeah, it, no, it's true. It's true when they're on duty. Okay. And, um, when they're wearing their harness, she, nobody can touch her or talk to her or make eye contact with her. It's no look, no touch, no, no talk, no touch, no eye contact. Okay, so when they're on duty, but if yeah, they're... when they're on duty, yeah. But when she's free like this, see, no harness, she's just being a dog. Oh my God, I love her. I know. But that's the one question I didn't get to ask yesterday in our little gathering. Uh, what is the, what's going to happen with the guide dogs when we're there at the event, at the so, sales mastery, unblinded sales mastery? So, um... I know because that we're if it's for anything room. like the Tony events, there's no way she can come in the room, right? I don't think it's gonna be quite like that. Um, okay. I mean, there's gonna be energy, but I know that they're going to. Uh, we're we're looking for a room right now, kind of like a a quiet room, like a mm -hmm. resting room. So, mm -hmm. um, but thank you for bringing that up because I'll actually add that to talk to Tiffany about that. Yeah, so, that needs to go on their agenda because and there any other blind people that are coming, I would not advise that um, if it is, well, I mean, it all depends. If it's a party atmosphere, there's no way the dog should be exposed to that. It's just not fair. And it's also not fair for the participants because the participants have to play full out, right? And so if they can have... Um, people assigned like at the custom at the tony events there's always one person assigned to victoria and that person is in charge of feeding her and taking her for walks and just overseeing like other people can come play with her and pet her and love her but uh, they you know one person has to be in charge so that she's not constantly being fed or over gotcha, gotcha. or monitored you know just because she's right. she's a guide dog and because she's a guide dog she's on a, quite a schedule and a right. routine because it makes my life easier when i'm in public places and office and meetings and that kind of stuff sure um, okay I definitely know it. yeah that's cool i'm awesome. not the only one surely the no. good can't be no 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 you're not you're not so yeah. I'm, I'm excited we definitely i'll bring that up okay that's cool good morning good morning, good morning to everybody good morning. Good morning. happy new year happy hi it's new orly year. it's orly good morning hello orly how you doing i'm fantastic you beautiful soul 
<laughs> oh my goodness, he's shining bright with you. I see we have Veron on the phone. And yes, is it good morning you? with my tired self? <laughs> Aw. How are you guys? We're doing phenomenal. Veron, where are you from? Where are you at now? I'm in South Carolina. Oh, that's right. We're neighbors. I'm in North Carolina. We're in North, yeah, I know. And We're I'm in Florida now. I, okay, I moved from south. Florida. I moved from Florida um, about almost two years ago. Right, that's right. I remember you saying that. And I moved from Toronto, so I know I have my fellow Canadian on the line. Hey, yay! Yeah. Hey, girl. Yes. <laughs> we stick together. Well, you know, but there was a big uh, snowstorm. We have like it was a lot of freezing rain and ice rain here, and oh. now it's uh, turned into big snow. So I much prefer the snow over the freezing rain. Uh, I apologize. I moved to Florida. I can walk out in shorts. Sorry. <laughs> Jen, did you know Orly is a chef? A yes. certifiable chef. Yes, that's a all certifiable. I familiar with her, I was looking at her. Um, <laughs> you know that thing that she did online. That was when I actually, and then the next day I spoke with her on the on the. Um, yes. Wall. So, What's that? Sorry, you you saw what on? Um, pardon me. I'm. I just graduated culin. I just graduated culinary school. I'm completely blind. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah. So that's you don't need amazing. vision through the eyes. You need vision from every part of your soul and your vision from every other sense right. to accomplish exactly. whatever. And, and that's my passion. It might not be someone else's, but okay. everybody should just go out and do what's meaningful to them. And that's, that's exactly. my life's purpose. That's exactly yeah. right. Hey, were you on um, Top Chef? Um, it, in Canada. Like, yeah, Canada Top Chef. Yeah. That's what? Right. In there, the... there was a blind um, participant on that show, on Canada's Top Chefs. And that was the, you, the one, huh? the sh I'm not sure which show you're referring to. It was on Accessible Media. Yeah. And it was, it was a cooking competition. Yes, right. that was three yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That was lots of fun. That's me. I, my name is Orly. Orly, that was you. Interesting. Very nice. Look, guys, how, how this, like, I'm getting chills and the multiplying. Know. How <laughs> is it that we're connected? It took a blind man, Sean, to create yes. this unblinded so we can all be reunited and it feels, and it so, feels good. so good <laughs> oh my god and we feel understood yes. <laughs> uh, i love I'm it famous. this is a great experience for me i'm like it's just I'm not usually yeah. speaking like, when I don't talk too much, but in terms of words, mm -hmm. words are my instrument. But I'm telling you, this is really something else. And I can't wait for, the, well, it's just a little over a week now. We'll all be together. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Veron, uh, and you're like a nurse, me. Right? What's that? You're a nurse, right? Certified nurse and assistant. Well, that's just one of the things that I do. And I'm um, hoping to get away from that soon <laughs> but i've been doing this for 14 years gotcha well what was your passion again writing that's right uh, what is beautiful. it beautiful what is writing your passion writing. i write oh you're a writer okay uh, that's awesome and um, and when we're there when we're there we have to talk as my goal I have a writing coach starting in January is to write an inspirational cookbook and my memoir. Oh, I've never, I've never written for people, but that's what my goal, my first 2020 goal is to do. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Now Samia is coming this morning to my house. Ooh, what are you making? Are you making eggs Benedict? <laughs> 
She's so cute. <laughs> Wait, no, I you're laughing, but that's my favorite. <laughs> is it? Yes. Ooh. Oh, nice. I'm not laughing. I just think it's so cute because you just think of food that you want in your tummy. You said yesterday, what, my food in your tummy. <laughs> my food in the tummy. Hey, and we've got Jay Levine in the house. How you doing, sir? Hey. It's the Women Take Over Day, right? That's right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good day any day. <laughs> Yay, Mr. Levine in the house. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Are good you, morning. Hello. Are you leading the call today, Jamila? Sorry? Are you leading the call today? No, I am passing that back over to Fernando. Fernando, it was girls Fernando. were loose today. <laughs> any, 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 Fernando. Yes. Fernando, <laughs> girls gone wild. Yeah. That, that's what I'm walking into on Trajectory Tuesday. Like this. <laughs> yes. Feel oh the feminine power, Fernando. Feel the power. <laughs> right? I love the power. I love the Zeus and goddess energy coming from everyone on this call. And uh, please know, it, it, is a, it is a measure for Unblinded and for myself that when we're talking the least, we're actually winning. So I'm very grateful yeah. for all of, you, all of you leading, all of you sharing. And in my, because um, every night I digest the day and I take notes and I write. And I, I was very happy at how yesterday's call went. Thank you to Jay. Thank you to Michael. Because uh, we started the call with asking questions about the formula specifically. And it just led to a very tactical call, um, which is, you know, always good to have some stories and some of It's always important to anchor it on to something on the formula. So I was very present to um, the, the use value of that time together. So I want to flip it back. Um, so I want everyone to kind of share not only wins, um, but some questions on the formula, any, any specific point, or a win on how they use a specific part of the formula so that we can raise our level of mastery in it together and continue to sharpen. So I want to pass the microphone back over to the ecosystem. Would anyone like to share a question they have on the formula or a win they had because they used the formula? So ready, go. Agreement formation. Okay. Can you, it's a question. Can yeah. you share like how that would look like from getting to, from a hello to a yes? Yes, I would love to just a little bit more optics so I can properly, you know, speak into your listening. So are you asking how it fits in the four steps? Are you asking how we transition into it? Are you asking distinctions within it? Oh yes. Transition, the transition okay. from it. Yes. Um, perfect. So thank you. See, th this is what distinctions look like. Um, cause if I wasn't clarifying and verifying, I could have gone in multiple different directions and not speak into your listening. So thank you for that. That's a lesson in itself. Um, so when it comes to agreement formation, I got a great one from Jared yesterday. Um, so a beautiful one is, oh, and by the way, Yamile, like, did you know that our average attendee is bringing seven people? That's the transition. Wow. Right there. That's, awesome. That's it. That, that is the transition. That is, uh, that is called forward thinking. Um, that is um, from Tracy. Uh, the, the, the right things to say is most people are. So when you say most people are, people want to be like most people, just like people want to be open-minded. Oh, and by the way, Emila, did you know that uh, most people are bringing seven? Um, and then instead of asking how many people are you bringing, the tr very small distinction are, what are the names of the people you're bringing? Oh, it's okay. a much different question. Like you're already insinuating that they must know names. So they're going to say something. But if you say how many, they're going to say, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe this. But when you ask, what are the names? Like you're already anticipating uh. an answer. And uh, these are micro distinctions within agreement formation where language is, I don't want to say the most critical, but very crucial um, because we're, we're looking for yeses in those moments. So quick pause. It's 830. Want to check in? Tiffany, Sean, are you with us? All right. So let's go back. Yamile, um, does that answer your question? Does that open up? And to anyone else in the group, does that open up another question possibly? It did answer for me. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking. Uh, let's continue. Uh, anyone else on agreement formation or any specific questions on the formula or a win they had? by using the formula. Thank you for all your voices and to anyone new, beautiful opportunity to hear you share. Would anyone else like to go? 
uh, hey, Fernando, this is Leland from Cold Talking. Hey. Hey, Leland, brother. You sound real far, so if you can yell a little bit for us, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I'm trying to adjust my headset a little bit, see if that sounds better. Yep, a little better. Just keep yelling. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, if you can go over a little bit more in detail on the step two for the pain and yes strategy. I know there's some other points to it that I'm kind of forgetting. Um, yes. Just because I've tried to help my dad with his business. And yes. uh, it sounds like I, I was trying to help help him out. And then he changed what he wants and kind of, uh, he just keeps changing his mind. So I just wonder if there's anything there there that can help concrete what he wants as well so thank you uh, want to check in again sean are you with us yeah hey fernando what's happening everybody what's happening? good morning what's and sean happy new year's eve what's cooking out there happy fernando what is present eve. yeah happy new year's eve to everybody so what's present out there for you mr fernando um gee the levels of momentum uh, i think it, the best way to describe it is that Adam and I and the Unblinded team were in the office from about 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. yesterday. And even though we were about 15 feet from each other, Adam and I must have talked for under 15 minutes. And that's because we were all on the phone. Energy was hot. I took pre-workout for the first time, and that was a little ridiculous. And I did it again today. And uh, it's just, just energy, yeses, people going from no to yeses, hello to yeses, strangers saying yes. So it was really exciting. And to recreate, uh, Mr. Callagy, what would just happen, Yamile was asking some questions on agreement formation in which we went through some distinctions. And then Leland was asking some questions on pain and yes, step two, regarding the fact that he's helping his parents in his business. His father keeps changing his job and he wants to know if possibly step two could support him in that. And then you jumped in. So that is where we are. Wow, awesome, beautiful thing. And if I could uh, just briefly jump into those slots and then we'll back it up. You know, agreement formation, it's, it's so critically important to realize that disruption is an essential word. Disruption is an essential word in creating a movement and creating acceleration, but also going from hello to yes and integrity-based human influence. Because for so many people, well, for many reasons, but one of the reasons is so, many, so often we have that like awkward discomfort where it's like, are we pushing? Are we pulling? what's happening, and we talk about a, a step four agreement formation, and we're going to do uh, exercises in this space and go into a lot more detail into better 10, 11, and 12, of course, and, and just for now, realize that we, we talk about leaning into the objection, leaning into the objection, and making it fully safe to be in the space, and that, and that in and of itself is disruptive. The comfort we have with like, wow, like, so Fernando, um, I'm just hearing that you're uncomfortable with the idea of moving forward. And, and I'm just really curious, like, what's present for you? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. No, no, it's, it's totally okay. Because either it's like we're not aligned and this isn't a good fit, and that's absolutely okay. Or maybe I've done, you know, a really poor job of explaining and building rapport and being clear about what's happening. So if we could, like, it's safe. It's safe for you to say no, friend. It's okay. But let's just really understand like where things are and just like what's present for you. Like that congruence, that certainty, and that comfort in stepping into the space of not pressuring somebody, being present to listen, having them feel absolutely comfortable with saying no creates a disruption in the energy in and of itself. Does that make sense, Fernando, everybody? It does. And uh, just an access because I got it yesterday, is, is a question, and I like your, your sharpening on it. Sean, can you, like, please tell me exactly what you're saying no to? You know, how, yeah, with, with, that, with that? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get yeah, your thoughts because, on that question. Because so often people just don't understand, and they're just at a default no. So realize that people default to no out of fear. Fear of rejection, fear of failure. Like, that's the default. And stepping into the space and being on the same side with them and walking with them through it. Because so often it makes no sense. And I just want to give you like real access to this. So for, for one of the things that we've done for Calgary Law for many, many years is we help review and audit um, doctor's offices, hospitals, surgical centers. This is one thing that we do. Um, medical revenue recovery. It's like they're billing with insurance companies. So we come in and do a free audit and a free review. And it makes absolutely no sense for anybody to say no to us. And for portions of what we do, 
if we find money, we can actually recover it for free. Like that's, that's actually all true. Uh, so there's a fee shifting provision with the insurance companies. And yet, we have people who say no all the time. And just as a default, no, 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 we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. And it's because it's so reflexive. Logically, it makes no sense. None in the world. And, the, I get, and that's the final point I'll make on this and we'll move on. That um, people don't make any decisions for logical reasons. Every single decision people make is based in emotion. And we real, when we realize that, even if they, they are so locked into believing that their, uh, that their decision making is rooted in logic, they could be a scientist. You know, I had um, my, my aunt's ex husband, beautiful soul, love him to death. He, he just got somebody out of prison who'd been in prison for 20 years who was wrongfully convicted um, of a, mur- a murder. They just didn't commit. It was a beautiful, brilliant man. Um, he was a Yale undergrad, Harvard Law School. And he would tell you all day long he's the most logical person, and he it, it's just not true. He's like so emotionally driven, just like everybody else. It's crazy, and he just popped into my head because he he would be one of the ultimate unlogical things or ever unlogical. And so many things he does in his life are purely emotionally driven, just like everybody, uh, every other beautiful soul in the world. And so when we realize that, and and we don't make people wrong for it, we're not trying to convince people of it. But we step into the fact that people are just an emotional space, not logically driven. That's where they're coming from. And it's just like a two-year-old child that you know wants to have ice cream for breakfast or wants to pull a knife out of a kitchen drawer and play with it. That we have to step there with them in love and support, aligned with them, walking them through their emotions and not feeling our own fear of rejection, fear of failure, because that's what puts up the barriers and disrupts our own energy and approach. We get in our own head. We're like, oh, we don't want somebody to say no to us. It's going to feel bad. And we can deal with our own self-mastery and align with other people's dynamics and approach. That's when it truly moves forward powerfully. So that's on, on that piece. And yes, obviously, connecting people to their pain and yes strategy helps align people's emotional decision-making appropriately. And that's why step two uh, is to deal with pain and yes strategy because when we connect people to their pain, we're stepping into their own emotional paradigms with them. So for those that are new... And like, what is happening here? I thought it was like on some emotional, you know, like inspirational morning thing. You know, we're deep into the science of how people actually function going from low to yes. But we have fun with it. It's exciting. It's powerful. It's beautiful. And that's what's happening. And by the way, again, it's New Year's Eve. It's the end of a decade. The end of a decade. And the question I have for you is, 10 years ago, as 2009 was wrapping up, and we're stepping into 2010, where were you? Where were you mentally, emotionally, financially? Like, what did you believe about yourself? What was possible in the world? What things have you done in this past decade that have absolutely blown your mind? Maybe it's just how you've affected your body. Maybe it's how you've affected yourself spiritually. Maybe it's the steps forward you've taken in your, your financial abundance. Like, what have you done? that you reflect 10 years ago and say, I never thought I could be in this space now. Maybe it's a relationship that you're in. Maybe it's where you are in your business, your career. Maybe for Adam Gugino, it's like, yeah, dude, I became number one at ADP. I crushed it and took momentum solar from like, you know, just this interesting little thing to like one of the most successful companies in the world. Like, what is it that you did during this decade? And and don't minimize yourself. Be like, "Ah, I haven't really done anything. That's just not true. Maybe you overcame a fear. Maybe you just came to love yourself in a new and different way. So before you go into what you haven't done, because we'll ask that question in a second. What is it that you have done? And who wants to jump in and own it and step into your greatness and share in this huddle the beautiful journey that you took in the last decade, what you overcame, what chasm you crossed, what you're proud of, what you feel amazing about. And it doesn't have to be anything that's financially or business related. So who's got something they want to inspire people with or just own for yourself. Anybody? What's out there? I can do it. It's yeah, Darcy. Is that Darcy? Hey, yeah. Darcy, what's happening? Good morning. Um, I don't know. I, uh, oh gosh, 10 years ago, so much has happened to me, but probably as little as four years ago, my dream was for, I was living in my parents' house in Manassas, Virginia. And my dream was for them to finish the carriage house out back because I really couldn't um, live on my own. And I wanted 
freedom from my mother because we fought a lot. And then fast forward four years, I went from um, probably, I don't know, not doing so well to a couple years later, traveling the world with the top 1%. And it was all because I took risks that made me very sick to my stomach. And I followed my intuition and got in touch with like more spiritual. And it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm just grateful every day because I feel like I'm living my dream. So um, I'm, I'm very grateful. I never thought I'd be where I am right now. Thank that's you. unbelievable. And I heard you say the number 1%. I just missed that. What were you saying about 1%? Oh, it's like I went from almost being in the bottom 1% to the traveling the world with the top 1% within a oh, very amazing. short amount of time. Amazing, Dorothy. And, and, and what, is, what do you think was one key distinction? I'm sure there are many, but what's one of the key distinctions that occurred for you that helped you create that, that amazing transformation and breakthrough? I don't stop until I get what I want. So I keep trying different things and exploring different options and keep going and going and going and going and going until, um, until I'm good. That's awesome. So I'm hearing massive action, massive action, consistent innovation, you know, reviewing what's working, what's not, and continuing to move forward. Amazing. Yes, you're very awesome. eloquent. Thank you. No, thanks, Dorsey. And who, who else has something they'd like to jump in and share I've, with? That's I've awesome. got something, Sean. Who's this? Jamile. Jamile, how are you? Wonderful. The past 10 years, let me tell you, have been so transformative because I began it by chasing my dream, which was to be a principal of a school. I did it. I nailed it. I reduced discipline. I increased uh, community awareness, all that stuff but I got to a dead halt. Like, is this what life is all about? Is, did I get to a place and I'm stuck? And that is when I was introduced to Tony Robbins two years ago, went to the event in New Jersey where I was born. And even though my life, I had everything. I had two dogs, a goat, a nice little white picket fence. A I goat. thought I had reached it. Yeah, Jack the goat. That's amazing. That's goat. amazing. Yeah. And so, well, in North Carolina, representing really greatest care. of all time, representing yes. greatest of all time by <laughs> Emile. What's up? That's okay. right. And so, what I realized when I went to the Tony Robbins event um, was a lot. I realized I came back and I let go of my dream to now search like desperately for my destiny. And do you know that it's been over the last three months that I have achieved that? And even more so over the last three weeks, right before the end of this decade, that unblinded unfolded in my life. And I have been reunited with the very ultimate destiny that I was called to be, which is to be with you guys. And to oh. be big, bigger impact to around the world. So just super excited. Still have the goat. Casey will not eat it. And <laughs> That's awesome. the, major, the major distinction is finding a fam family or a ecosystem that believes in who we are and that every single one of us has a desire to pursue greatness, not necessarily only for ourselves, but for the whole world. Man, yeah, that's beautiful. And, and thank you for that access, um, Jamile. That is unbelievable to, who, to reach a place of achieving a dream of being a, a principal, which is an incredible, special and unique accomplishment in the world. And just that pursuit in the first place is, is beautiful and amazing. And I'm you know, familiar, I guess, at least with the, the area that you grew up in, that was not the easiest area to grow up in. Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, tough, you know, tough inner city environment, um, immensely challenging. Um, and you know, not far from where I grew up also, and but then to have the courage to stop and say, you know what, this is a beautiful place I am, but I, I'm at this great base camp. This is a dream to make base camp, but I'm going to like put the gear on and start to climb to the next level and go to the next place and make the next breakthrough and take life on. And that's a beautiful thing. And thank you for sharing that on this uh, incredible New Year's Eve. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah. Awesome. We'll take one more. Who's, who's one more person? That's like, yeah, hey, this is where it was. Hey, sure. Oh, maybe we'll take oh. two more. Who's that? I hear a male voice. 
Uh, and then Neil a female Kanye. voice. The male, Neil, was up, Jay, the, the male was Jay, but take 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 somebody else. All right, we'll go Jay, Neil, and then I heard a female uh, voice as well, I think. So what's up, Neil? Let the female go first. Go first. Uh, who do you want to go first? Uh, Neil. Okay, awesome. So thank you. Appreciate it. Well, Sean, first and foremost, uh, you just I just had this amazing moment uh, just because of the way you articulated uh, this part of the call where there's been a lot of stuff on social media about, you know, the end of the decade. But I hadn't realized that like the 10 years ago was 2009. So in 2009 for me, um, I had just had just had my my daughter. Uh, I was working one of the top five investment banks investment banks in the world. I came back from a trip. I had this amazing, crazy ego at the time, and I walked in, handed in my expense report, and I got handed my pink slip in the same conversation. And wow. uh, the bank, the bank was downsizing, and uh, and so the economy was not so great in two thousand nine. And I would end up spending. Uh, actually, let me pause for one second. Get my breath. Uh, my ego was so high at that point. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sell Christmas trees for December. And so I sold Christmas trees in Tribeca, um, which was an amazing experience to kind of help families and kids. And then my ego was still so big for a couple months afterwards. I took my family on a big vacation. And I said, you know what? After this, I'm just going to go and get my next big job. And then the economy was shit then. And so I would end up spending the next 16 months uh, you know, unemployed and bankruptcy. And uh, I was a veteran. I'm a veteran who was at the time was going through my veteran transition. And I got to a point where uh, I was living in Queens, New York at the time. And I would get up in the morning. I would unplug my, my click, my click, my click iPod at the time with the click wheel at that, that point for anyone who remembers that. And I would go for a walk run and I would walk run until the battery ran out. And that's when I would turn around and come home. And that's when I would job search. And I, it was definitely like an amazing transformation time in my life where um, I needed that reset. I needed to go through that kind of, I call it my rock bottom for the time. And since then, uh, eventually I got a job at a startup. Uh, I led that startup from 2 million to 12 million uh, in revenue in about two years. Um, awesome. we, I did, I did exit from that. I then, uh, started my own startup, which then got acquired by Omnicom a couple of years ago. Um, I then pivoted into cybersecurity and built a cybersecurity platform that, uh, is going to go public on the Canadian stock exchange next month. And then about two years ago, I started a company called AppGuard. In the past two years, we've raised $119 million in investment. We're about to go for a series D. And if everything goes the way that it's supposed to, we'll go public in the next six months. Uh, Neil, I, I would say that, uh, number one, you're a stud. Number two, that is a sick and insane decade, brother. How does that feel? Uh, I'm confident you probably felt my energy change as we went from Christmas trees to public, public raising. Um, it's been a fucking amazing 10 years. Congratulations, brother. Thank you for that beautiful share. And just the real, the real quick final piece, I know it took a lot of yeah. time there, but the real pivot for me really was about a year and a half ago, uh, Tim Herja, who's Tony Robbins' golf, co golf uh, coach friend, uh, said, you gotta, you're doing a lot of things, but you're burnt out. you got to come to a Tony Robbins event. And I'm grateful for Tim because I say that, uh, you know, the last two years have been the beginning of my second life. And just the fact that, Going to U the first UPW and then going to uh, Date with Destiny was my third Tony Robbins event. Hearing you speak and being connected to Michael Christian and a bunch of other folks on his call, uh, I feel like I'm only just beginning and I'm grateful for all of you and grateful for the experience and I'll see you guys at the event. Awesome, Neil. Thank you so much for that chair. And I've heard great things. Of, uh, Tony tells beautiful stories about, uh, yeah, I think uh, Jim is name, right? His golf coach. Um, especially in the, the massive distinctions that apply and how much, you know, our rhythmic approaches to things can leave us, you know, sort of in a, in a suboptimal track. And then we break out of those things, we take some steps back and then massive acceleration. So Tony tells some great stories about him as well. So thank you for that awesome sharing. Thank you. And Jay, uh, will you next, brother? Hi. Oh, who's Sorry. that? 
Hi, it's Gail. I've not spoken before, but uh, hey, Gail, so how are you? I'm good, thank you. I've been part of the group for about two, three weeks now, and trying to log on every day. But uh, I, uh, yeah, it's first time I'm I'm speaking, so that's awesome. all right. Yeah, where you? are you? Yeah, where where are you from? I'm actually li I'm French, but I live in the UK. Oh, amazing. Uh, well, well, what's happening? So, um, so thanks for having me. I, you know, I appreciate that. And looking back at this past decade, I've had massive highs and devastating lows. But the best about those lows is that they made me who I am now and I wouldn't change anything for the world. Um, so the highs, I became triathlon world champion as an amateur uh, in 2010. And then I was also triathlon European champion the year after and also silver medalist again at the world champs while I was working 14 hours a day on a trading floor. Um, oh my God. Uh, I, during that time, I also got promoted to director level um, and I was working for the top bank in the world uh, and I was also the highest revenue producer in my team in London for seven years in a row while doing all this. <laughs> um, I traveled Unbelievable, the world. Yeah. Um, thank you. I traveled the world and, and I was lucky enough to have the most amazing sort of experience. I probably went onto the four continents. I'm missing probably one out. Uh, and I met some wonderful and amazing people. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that. The lows I had is I was in a long term relationship for 10 years, which ended up uh, throughout the decade. Uh, but the good thing about it, it made me more compassionate and understanding and super resilient as I learned to deal with mental health issue. The person I was with at the time, for a good 10 months, I would go home and not knowing whether I'd find them alive or not when I got home. Um, wow. I had then another relationship that ended too, and the silver lining there was someone I helped become a, a commercial airline pilot as well, because he wasn't doing that at all before. So I helped him to achieve his, his dream in a way. Um, and because of him, and I'm really, really, really grateful for, for him because our relationship was such a struggle. I actually, that became my lesson for a real awakening. And he made me discover Tony Robbins, um, and also triggered my journey to become a coach. So I'm eternally grateful for it. Uh, because even if I faced depression then, um, because I was so off my blueprint and my real life was just so off the chart, um, you know, and I wouldn't wish anyone to be in a toxic relationship or anything like that. I've learned the lesson I needed to learn. So for me, that was such, such a big thing because without him, I wouldn't be here with you guys now. Um, same also, I'm very grateful that my role uh, on the trading floor was uh, made redundant after 16 years. And for me, it was great because I didn't want to be in it at past age 40. So for me, it was like kind of like, okay, great. What do I do next? And I tried something else, which after nine months, I realized wasn't really at all what I was after and confirmed that I really wanted to mentor people and, and help them to become better. And that's why I'm doing now, you know, coaching. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really wish for anything better. And I had other things happening as well during that decade where I ruptured my ACL while I was looking to do a whole year full time uh, of triathlon. And I had some other health care. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to say thank you for listening to me. I'm so grateful for that last decade. Uh, it was 2019 was very transformational for me and I can't wait for 2020 because it's going to be a blowout year um, and with you know being involved with you guys I can't see the limit to this so thank you so much for having me um, okay I'll thank you and uh, inspirational not only your athletic achievements as a triathlete but your your business achievements and and your ability to reflect upon relationships that clearly um, didn't many people would say didn't serve you, but in fact, you had the beautiful access to, to viewing how much they did serve you, the lessons you learned, the gifts you gave, and inspirational, and thank you, Gail. And what's present for me with each of these shares is just the, in, the utterly unbelievable group of people that are assembled here to get every person on this line who didn't share as beautiful shares, just like these folks. And an access point to all this is to, to always remember the beauty of being inspired, 
by what everyone shares, right? So there's much of the world looks at things from a place of envy or from a place of uh, living beliefs, like I can't do that or that's not me or I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. And the space that I challenge all of us to come from is as we hear each share to see what's possible for ourselves in the, the, in the beauty that, you know, Darcy and, and Gail, um, like the, the immense possibility that each and every one of the people every day in this huddle share um, and to follow that in our heart and to realize that we have all of that. We're, we're great and fine as we are, but all these possibilities that exist for our own growth and acceleration. And, you know, for me, as we, you know, draw to close the next uh, two, three minutes, you know, a decade ago, um, I was I was in a a partnership um, legally that was was tremendously caretaking. I had, you know brought somebody along. They were not fulfilling anything that they were supposed to be fulfilling. Um, and some of my caretaking tendencies were alive and well in personal relationships, professional relationships, and the, the growth that I feel that I've experienced in that space over decades. Still, massive opportunities to go, but I, I realized that what a gift um, those folks brought to my life in helping me confront myself and helping me create more powerful and effective boundaries and helping me build and accelerate um, Calgary Law to where it is to continue to grow uh, the formula and its application. I was you know, in the infancy of realizing some of the great challenges, the challenges that existed in youth sports and some of the corruption that was in that space took on some massive challenges, would ultimately lead to some of the most fulfilling journeys of my life, walking through with my children uh, over the past decade. And now being in a space of two years ago, truly ripping it open and deciding to accelerate um, and bring or talking about to the world, but only really stepping forward in this space in the last six months. And the things that have been occurring, I, I couldn't have imagined. And my gratitude, I was talking to Jared yesterday, I'm gonna kick it to him in a second, and, and we're talking not only about the quantity of people um, that are coming to January 10, 11, 12, but the unbelievable quality of people that are coming and the people that are on this call every day. And I'm humbled, um, I'm thrilled, excited, and I'm so thankful for your trust. Your trust in your time and your energy and your focus. And, you know, in my heart, from my heart to yours, um, my promise is that that, that trust, that engagement, is going to be an investment incredibly well spent as we accelerate and grow together because I am committed at the highest level to bring in the most massive value and access to, to more money in less time with more magic for people um, at, the, at the absolute highest level, not only emotionally, but intellectually. And that's like what it's about. And so final question, we're not going to answer it uh, together, but we're going to answer it you know, in your own space is, and what is it? That you've been holding yourself back from over this past decade? What are the dreams you had 10 years ago that you were sitting and you knew you were capable of, knew what you had access to? And for whatever reasons, you hit those barriers of fear, fear of failure, fear of rejection, you know, that would be connected to your feelings of worthiness and access, that we're going to like throw that flag in the ground and say right now, and I'm blinded, this is our decade. This is our acceleration, and not just metaphysically, not just like the secret where it's out there metaphysically, which is a beautiful thing to, to plan, to vision, but like a peak performance sports team. We're going to hit the gym. We're going to take massive action together. We're going to challenge each other. We're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to tell each other the truth. We're not just going to say, hey, everything's great. We're all perfect as we are, and we are, but we're not going to leave it there. We're going to say we have access to more. We're going to get in the gym. We're going to get there in January 10, 11, and 12. We're going to come to these huddles. We're going to hold one another accountable and create massive access and acceleration as forces for good in this world to create more, not only for ourselves, but to multiply the value of every ecosystem we touch. We're going to multiply our own value. We're going to multiply our ecosystem value, and we're going to multiply the value of every ecosystem that we touch personally or our ecosystem touches. Like, what is that for you? What is that commitment? What is that access? And today, answer that question. Answer that question in writing for yourself. What are you committing to in this decade? Not just conceptually, but in your process best or your daily patterns of action. What is it that you're going to do? And own that in your heart. And with that, Jared, what's present for you, brother? And any uh, wrap-up notes as we, we roll into the next decade? Hello, hello, everybody. And Sean, amazing, amazing close to an epic decade and the beginning of another one and how cool is it everybody like 
you all found this movement in 2019 and I'm not confused. I know Sean's not confused. I know no one on the Unblinded team is confused. You're exactly where you're all meant to be. And I've had the pleasure of speaking with many of you and you've spoke with many people on our team. You're exactly where you're meant to be. And I wanna make sure that that lands as we now step into this next decade, because we're now stepping into this next decade together. And just wait when you can see what we can co-create. I mean, it's, it's, it's unmanageable. And Sean and I were talking yesterday about this. And like Sean just said, it's not just the quantity of people coming, because that's fascinating. I mean, as of five weeks ago, there, there was very, very few people registered. And now, I mean, we already oversold one venue and this venue is gonna be filled like to capacity, but it's not about the quantity. It's really about the quality. Every single person that's coming is coming and they're bringing so much to the table. And to have a room filled with people that can merge ecosystems on the spot that absolutely can change the world just fascinates me. But here's even the cooler part. It's not just about the quantity and the quality. It's also about what the experience will actually be. You're all going to be operating inside of the formula for three immersive days together. Let that land. And as we now step into this next decade, envision what this looks like for you. Start to write the story of your own life of what will happen, not what you wanna happen, but what will happen in the next 10 years. And more specifically, in the next 10 days, because that's when we're together. We're together 10 days from today. You're coming out, whether you're flying or you're driving or you're taking trains or whatever it looks like, you're coming out to Secaucus, to the Meadowlands Expo Center, so we can all be together for our first immersive experience together. We had a call last night um, and it was a wonderful call. And, and the question that was asked is, how did you guys do it? Like a few weeks ago, this Facebook group didn't even exist. Now there's thousands of people and there's hundreds and hundreds of posts every single day. Here's the coolest part. Every one of you feel like you already know each other. And some of you do, but maybe 5% do. And the other 95%, you don't. It's this virtual relationship that already feels so real because this is so right. And you're now gonna have a chance to spend three full days together. You're gonna to see faces that you've only seen in pictures or on videos next to you. And you're gonna be able to learn together and role play together. And then integrate and synthesize what you learn together as you depart on January 12th. So I'm sharing this so that you enter this new year prepared and ready to go. Because I can assure you this, we are. We're ready for you. And what we're creating is something that's never been done before because we're absolutely creating it together. You are as much an author of Unblinded as any of us, and it's an honor and a pleasure to work with you. Now, some housekeeping notes. There are close to 1,000 tickets right now that are accounted for in the sense that people signed up and they paid for guests to come. We just don't have name, email, and phone number. And we will oversell this venue as well. Like we just have to, at some point, say, that's it, it's filled. So right now, if you're one of those people and you have two tickets left or four tickets left or maybe a dozen tickets left, I ask you to spend five minutes today and just think of who those people are gonna be. Like who are your guests that you're gonna sit with this, at this experience, learn with and role play with, and please make it easy on the Unblinded team and give us a call. And all that we need is the name, email, and phone number for those people. It's 863-862-5463. The greatest gift that you will give anyone in your life in this next decade is an opportunity to start the decade with you. Have them come through this experience with you. They'll sit with you, they'll learn with you, they'll role play with you, and then you'll go back home together. And that's where it gets really serious because you have this new language. It's been an honor in the short time we've had to get to know each other. And all that I can say is this is simply the beginning and the best is yet to come. Let's bring on the next decade. Thank you, everybody. That's it, brother. And, and one, one final, final, I just want to express some gratitude. Um, I, we're talking to a presidential candidate, a U.S. presidential candidate, about um, endorsing their candidacy and them endorsing Unblinded and what we're doing. And it's a person that stands for truth and justice, and we'll get to that on a different day. But what is unbelievable to me is that we're having conversations with people running for president about Unblinded. And like legitimately running for president, you know, not, not somebody nobody's ever heard of. It's unbelievable the things that are happening at this juncture. Unbelievable. And my gratitude goes out to Adam, to Jared, to Fernando, to Dorsey, to Kelly Hanna, to, to Ben Fox, to 
everybody in the, the unblinded world, Rob Gill, Dan Geltrude, like these people who were there before any of this was happening, that were, that were laying the seeds, people cowled you law that have sacrificed so much in terms of, uh, you know, pro- proximity, time, and energy to me and everything that's been happening over the past six and 12 months and, and have just trusted and invested and taken charge. Tom Filatico, Michael Smikin, Tom LaGreca, so many people, how would you, you know, names that I'm not mentioning. Um, thank you. My children, you know, that, that were here on this beautiful vacation in the Pacific Northwest at Whistler and skiing, you know, guiding me, leading me, shooting fun, incredible videos, which at the time, you know, would drive my, my kids crazy if we took a picture. And now they realize, you know, the importance, the value, the inspiration, that the sharing that we're doing, creating videos and taking time, editing and sending, like everybody's working. My mom has been out here, Jerry, her husband, you know, my parents, my aunts, my family. I couldn't be more grateful for everybody that's been on the team. You know, Nicole for putting the incredible Christmas party together. Everything that we're doing out there has been truly special and remarkable sacrifice of Esme Tiffany, Schoonmaker, just like editing things, access, sending, you know, emailing, providing, sharing, like truly incredible. You know, Mona, her support and understanding for the insanity of what this is and what's happening and, you know, her being a piece of it and empowering me and inspiring me and sharing, you know, in, in this journey, just, just so incredibly. Um, I am so immensely thankful to everyone and, and all the names, Craig, Tia, right? Just always there and present, just in, in heart and love. And so many people in the Tony Robbins by the partnership, that entire ecosystem, you know, just the value, the sharing, the contribution that's gone on. Um, I could not be more grateful. Um, Scott Martin, Shannon, uh, and on and on and on. So thank you to everyone for everything that you've done. Thank you for inspiring me and every name I didn't mention that's here every day. Please forgive me. Um, the names are just so many people. And on January 10, 11, and 12, we're going to make it happen. And certainly I'd be remiss if not sharing Jay Abraham's name. Jay has been beyond generous. Um, beyond a rock star, a person of absolute integrity in his contributions and his commitment to what's happening here. Uh, Chris Crone, brother, you know, as well, just immense, immense value add. And thank you to everybody. It is New Year's Eve. Um, and I, whatever it is for you, um, I pray that it's everything that you hope for. And for those things that it's not, that there's learning opportunities and growth from it. And, you know, God bless everybody. Love you. Happy New Year. And let's go get this next decade together. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Have an amazing year, everyone. Have a great night. See you all in Jersey on the east side. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year, everyone. Have an amazing 2020. Happy New Year. And as we say over here in Germany, Frohes Neues Jahr und Guten Rutsch. See you in 2020. Bye bye. Happy New Year.